Hey, what's up? I'm Josh Smith. This is the Fat Guy Transformation, my 365-ish day weight loss journey. And this is a bonus video uh, with a good recipe for you to try at home. So I'm not going to waste any time setting it up. We're just going to jump right in. But I will warn you with one thing. We do have five little boys, very noisy little boys. And so you will hear some background noise through this, but I've done my best to make sure that you can get everything you need out of the video. I hope it helps. Be sure to leave a comment, like, subscribe, be sure to share it, and we'll catch you on the next episode. All right, I'm going to show you how to make one of our favorite recipes. It's a, uh, you can take just about any kind of mild fish, like a, a cod or a Barramundi is something that we've gotten from Costco before. It's pretty good. It's a type of sea bass. <clears throat> but uh, what makes it really good is this white wine cream sauce. I'm going to show you how to make the whole thing. And there are some steps. There's not a ton of steps, but there is a little bit of prep involved. And so first, I'm just going to show you some of the ingredients for the sauce, how we get that stuff ready, put them in some nice little ramekins like this so they're ready to rock and roll when we need them. And then we'll work on cooking the fish and have all this stuff together. So. We've got uh, a shallot. We're going to chop up a shallot. I've already got some garlic cloves here. Uh, I left some of the skins on so I can show you a trick to get those off. And we're going to zest a lemon. So the first thing we need is a really sharp knife. It's important to have a sharp knife. So I'm going to take my shallot, nip the end off like that, and just kind of put some of these edges on it like that, cut through it like a little bit of a, a grid, if you will. Just like that. And once we uh, once we get it cut all the way is this way, it's going to make it a little bit easier for us to come back across and cut some nice, finely chopped shallots for our white wine cream sauce. And if you if you're not used to if you're not used to cooking and, and handling a knife, there is actually a right way to do it. My dad helped me figure this out. <clears throat> you want to you want to pinch the blade like that, right? Rather than hold all handle, you want a little bit of control up here on the blade. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually just kind of rocking the knife, right? Rocking the knife back and forth so that I can get that chopped up nice. That's why that kitchen knife is shaped that way, where it's sort of got that that roundedness to the blade. So it rocks nice and easily. And we cut up a shallot. My eyes are already beginning to water because the shallot's like an onion. It gets up in your eyes. I've been doing stuff with like the holding the matchstick between your teeth and putting a, a wet paper towel next to it to try to see if it absorbs some of that. It helps a little bit. I'm not gonna let it slow me down right now. I'll make it. Let's get into it. All right, I had to give in. I had to eat the matchstick. So I heard about that. You seen that movie, The Help? It was like this old wives' tale that they shared in there. It's the first time I had heard of it. Since then, I've heard other people talk about it. That's where I found out about it. And, uh, you know, some of these things are just true. I don't know why it works. Don't ask me. Maybe it's all in my head and it suits me just fine because it works a little bit. All right. So now I got my shallots chopped up nice and fine like that. I'm gonna get my ramekin. I'm gonna scoop that up on the edge of the knife. Get all that in there. Just like that. Now I get my shallots ready. Next thing I'm gonna do is take my garlic cloves. I've got my garlic cloves here. Now, I already separated those from the head of garlic, but you can see they've still got the stuff on them. And it can be a real pain trying to just peel all that stuff off. This is another one of those tricks. I peeled, I peeled the, the peels off of my garlic like that for a long time before I, I found this trick. So you just take the edge of your knife like that, set it over, over the top of the garlic, and just crush it like that. Might have to do it more than once. But then that just, splits it right off of there and that peel just really easily comes right off and now I've just got my garlic that I need to chop. Alright, so I'm going to do that with the rest of them. Just give it a pop with the knife. Be careful you don't hit the edge of that knife and cut yourself. But that opens that right up. 
and I've got some exposed garlic clove that I can chop up. That's how you pop those peels off of there. Peels off just like that. Nice, nice and easy. And a lot easier. So now that I've got the peels off of my garlic like that, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna chop this up real fine too, because again, it's going into a sauce, all right? I don't want it to be chunky in my sauce, so we're gonna cut that up real fine, just like we did with the other. And I, sometimes I'm not very good at this. I, sometimes I just have to go a little bit slower and be careful. But the right way to do this is to take whatever you're cutting and keep your fingers out of the way and let this touch your knuckles right here, okay? That way I can I can cut and I can be pushing, pushing my stuff in there and be chopping away without nicking my fingers. Sometimes I don't feel like I have as good a control doing it that way, so I just have to be a little extra careful. But if I got a finger sticking out there, I'll slow down a little bit. All right, and you're gonna have to take more than one pass with this garlic. Again, you wanna chop it real fine. My eyes are still recovering from the shot. So we keep chopping here, and this is, once you start to get real small pieces, that's when you can kind of put your hand over the top of the knife here and just rock it, right? Just like that. So you know, as far as keto recipes go, the thing about keto, or the ketogenic diet, as it's called, I remember reading the book, it's probably almost been 20 years ago now, before anybody really was talking about the keto diet, before you could buy keto supplements and whatever else they've got now, before it was a fad, there's this guy named Lyle McDonald, and he wrote a book talking about the benefits of the ketogenic diet. And people can kind of go off the rails with stuff, and uh, it's just like anything else, right? The person who talks about it first, you know, you, you get some good stuff out of it, but then as you get farther downstream, stuff starts getting kind of twisted. That's about how it's going with the ketogenic diet. But the idea is, you're very, very, very low carb. It's high protein and moderate fat. A lot of people want to say it's high fat. No, it's not. You know, if you're just getting started on the keto, you might feel like you need a little extra fat to stay, uh, you know, keep from being hungry all the time. That's fine. But if you keep it high fat forever, you're not going to lose the weight. So as far as keto recipes go, this is going to be fish, and it's going to have a little white wine in it that we're going to cook down. It's going to have some heavy cream that's fat. There's really no carbs to speak of here. We got onions, shallots, zest of lemon, some heavy cream, some butter, and uh, and a little oil. If I don't say that already. So that's what goes into this sauce, and I'm telling you, it is dynamite. Now, if you're not worried about doing keto and pasta is not going to affect you at all. Pasta is a part of your diet. That's no big deal. You're not trying to avoid carbs or anything like that. This sauce is really good on a little bit of a weenie, a little side dish, whatever fish you're putting it on. You can just toss your, your cooked pasta in this sauce and it is delicious. That should do the job. That should do the trick. So I'm going to get our hammock in. Pick that up. Scoop it right in there. Just like that. All right, now we got that out of the way. I'm gonna take a lemon, okay? I want a zest of lemon that helps uh, build up some of the flavor for the sauce. And uh, you can use like a small zester. The little zester I have doesn't work very well at all. So I'm just using like this, this cheese grater, the real, the real fine side. All I'm gonna do is take that and drag that lemon across it real quick. So I see some little pieces falling off. I don't need a whole lot. I made this one time recently and uh, put a, actually put a lot of lemon zest in it because I was making a bigger batch of the sauce. And it, it overpowered it a little bit. Amanda didn't mind it so much. She thought it was still pretty good. But I thought it, it jumped past that point of having that nice zesty lemon freshness to it into kind of being a little lemon forward, a little lemon dominant, if you will. So I'm gonna try to avoid doing that this time. I'm only gonna use about this much zest and I'll probably use a little less than that when it's time to throw it in there. I'll probably just take a little pinch of that and whatever gets left in the bowl, I'm gonna be all right with that. Then I'm gonna bundle all that up. I'm gonna toss it in my dish there like that. 
And now I've got my shallots, my garlic, and my lemon all ready to go. So when it's time to make the sauce, I'm not sitting here trying to figure this out. Or if I've got my fish cooking already, I'm not trying to figure all this out. This is a fancy term, mise en place. So it just means everything in place. We're gonna get all of our stuff, all of our ingredients in place first before we even start cooking anything so that once we are cooking, it's just, it's just drop and go. So now I've got my fish. This is Atlantic cod. And all I'm gonna do is salt and pepper it real quick. I've already rinsed it off. And I didn't figure I needed to show you that part because if you can't rinse off fish, then you probably don't have any business being in the kitchen. So, take some salt and just give it a good dusting. Pour it in your hands like this and just sprinkle it on. Give every piece a nice even dusting. And then come back over with some pepper. You don't have to kill it with the pepper, just sprinkle it on there. Look for a little bit of balance. And flip them over and do the same thing. A little bit of salt, a little bit of salt. So my wife and one of our dear friends is laughing at her right now while we're, while we're filming this. They're sitting here and trying to be quiet. They just saw each other and giving each other hugs and things and trying not to make any noise. I told them it's fine. We got lots of noise around right here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to get a baking dish. <clears throat> Ripping hot. I'm actually going to be cooking this with a skillet with some butter. But I want to take a pan like this and put it in the oven at like 500 degrees. And all I'm doing is warming the pan. You see, here's the thing. I'm going to cook this in a skillet and then I'm going to have to use that same skillet to reduce it down and start making my sauce. And this fish is going to have to stay warm. So I'm going to take the pan out of the oven, put the fish in it, Covered up with foil until my sauce is done. Now I've got hot fish to pour my sauce on when the fish wasn't cooling down. All right, so now it's time to cook the fish. So I got uh, some butter in the pan. I'm going to drop my fillets of cod right down in the pan and try not to burn myself. All right, our fish, our fish looks pretty well cooked. So now I'm gonna take that pan and put in the oven at 500 degrees. It's all nice and hot. I'm just gonna take each piece, set it down on my hot plate so we can keep it warm while we're making our sauce. I'm gonna reduce this down. You might ask what kind of wine? You're gonna want something that is crisp. This adds acid to the sauce, which you have to have in order for it to taste right. So you want like a Sauvignon Blanc or a Pinot Grigio, I think it is. Uh, a Chardonnay or something like that's not gonna work. So that's a, that's a Sauvignon Blanc, if I'm saying that correctly. All right, now we're ready for our cream. You see that nice little stripe to make with that. And y'all, I just, I don't, measure much stuff. It's kind of about balance, right? It's about balance. That's that's probably it. I probably used half of this container. This is 16 ounces, so probably about a cup. And I'm just going to start working that in and reduce that down until you start to see some of that oil separation. A good stripe in the pan. I'm going to come back in and add a little bit of salt to this. A little bit of pepper. Keep stirring that up. Watch it bubble and reduce down. And then we're going to be ready to go here okay, in just a minute. All right, so our sauce looks about done. So I'm going to take this off like that. And that's nice. And then I'm going to take these noodles that I set aside. Everyone else is eating the noodles, I'm not eating the noodles. I'm gonna take some of these noodles, I'm gonna drop them right straight down into the sauce and just start tossing that around in there. If you're gonna do noodles, you can cook them ahead of time and then uh, once you drain them off, they can sit and cool because they're gonna heat back up once you start tossing them around this, in the sauce. Get all up on that. And then if you feel like getting fancy, you can take a little bit of dried parsley, 
come over the top of the pasta and the fish just to give it a nice little presentation. All right, and there you have it. A nice cod and a white wine cream sauce. And here's the, uh, the not so low carb version for my wife and our guest. But there you go. So there you have it. A pretty simple recipe. Certainly good for somebody if, uh, if you're doing the ketogenic diet, if you're into the whole keto thing, this would be a good recipe for you. So uh, if you haven't already, again, a reminder, subscribe to this channel, like this video, all that stuff that, uh, that people say that they put videos out like this. And uh, if, you, if you try this recipe, leave a comment below. Let me know how you liked it. And of course, share this on social media. Share it with your friends. I appreciate you checking it out. See you next time.